about that time. Time for the inside corner. Jason Stark making us smarter on a Wednesday. Good morning to you. Good morning, Lauren. I will have you know I have been brushing up on my baseball <laughs> trivia. So whatever you're throwing my way, I got you. What do you have? Okay. It's time for the first you trivia. You don't believe me, by the way. 2023. <laughs> Done. Uh, yeah, Thank let's you. do this. Uh, a little Aaron Judge trivia. Aaron Judge shooting for his third home run title this year. If he were to lead the league in homers, it'd be, it, it would be the fifth time any player has led the league in homers at least three times in the wild card era. So, Lauren, all you have to do is name the other four to lead their league three times in the wild card era. You've heard of them. In the American League, right? Any league. Nelson Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> That's just okay. off the top of my head. We're not doing that yet. Okay, all right, all right. pause. Hey, a couple weeks in to the new rules, I feel like everyone has their thoughts, but just the general consensus when we talk amongst baseball people is that they're universally liked. What are your thoughts a couple weeks? Yeah, I know there's some players that are having a hard time adjusting. I, I think I don't... we expected that. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about players trying to reprogram their brains, reprogram a lifetime full of habits and routines. So, of course, there are going to be some moments. But I, I, I do think that from a fan experience, from the experience of watching baseball, it's so good that the games are 27 minutes shorter. The average game 27 minutes shorter than just a year ago. Think about that. Think about how it changes the experience of watching a baseball game and just how early you get home. But, you know, I, I actually think that the average time of brain game doesn't tell the full story. How about this, Lauren? We've had 50 games already under two and a half hours. 50, and only three over three and a half hours. Two of those were extra innings. The other one was a 10 to nine game. And that's just absolutely the opposite of last year. Last year this time, there had been two games, two nine inning games under two and a half hours. So think about the difference from two to 50. How different yeah. is it to watch baseball games? And I was thinking yesterday, I was watching the Padres and the Mets, and it, and it ended around 9.52. I was thinking, you know what? Kids can actually watch this game. They can watch this game before bedtime. I mean, it's a late bedtime, but it's not 11 o'clock, right? It's 9.45. All right. Mon Monday night, the average game ended at 9.18 p.m. I'll take Think it all day. It. When, when's the last time we lived in that planet? That's right. We're <laughs> living in it now, and we like it. We've seen multiple violations, Jason. They come in all forms, don't they? What have stuck out for you? Okay, I don't know if anybody else is nutty enough to be digging in and trying to keep track <laughs> of all the, no. <laughs> all the wacky violations you. every night. But some of them are pretty entertaining, right? So uh, th this just gives you a, a feel for where we are. We're already... Uh, uh, like 0.78 violations per game, meaning there are three violations every four games for both teams. I mean, we are already settling in considering it's week two, but some of these violations, Lauren, I'm telling you, they're pretty entertaining. Let's start with, who else? Shohei Otani. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what happened there? That was a pitch time violation as a pitcher. What, do you th what else happened later that night? He had one as a hitter, so he's the first one ever to have a violation as a hitter and a pitcher in the same game. Just one more thing Otani has done that Babe Ruth never did. <laughs> okay. Look at his reaction to it. Uh, like, he got me. Yeah, I also keep track of strikeouts not looking. This is one of my favorites. This is Mark Cano. What, what happened there? He was looking at the scoreboard to get the pitch speed of the previous pitch, and it said they only flashed up. Go Brewers! <laughs> so he got all out of sync, and that was strike three without a pitch being thrown. And, you know, it pays to be social, right? Not when that pitch clock is ticking. So this is Tomas Nito talking it up with Nick Fortes. And guess what, Nick? It's strike one. A strategy. <laughs> okay, so that is. It's a beautiful thing to be friendly, but not that friendly. Watch that clock. And then th th we got one more. This one's kind of my favorite, I think, of all. This is Eloris Montero. And he strikes out here. You know what happened? He called timeout. What's the problem there, Lauren? It was the second time he had called timeout. How many are you allowed per plate appearance? Oh. You're only allowed one per customer per plate appearance. So Gosh, that I didn't might, work out. Gosh, out of all well. those, it might be Mark Canna is my favorite because he just walked back to the dugout. <laughs> he has said, because he took, I think it was 21 seconds in between pitches last mm. year. It was the most in the National League. And yeah. he said, this might, this is hard for me because I'm a thinker, but maybe it'll help, right? That I don't have to analyze, <laughs> overanalyze too much. <laughs> right. That's a result. Look. Okay, just again, he's, he's, he was looking at the <laughs> scoreboard yeah. here. So he had a good excuse. Um, the scoreboard's supposed to give you pitch type 
and pitch velocity. And he was curious about the pitch before. Don't be that curious because <laughs> you don't always get that kind of info. That's right. Bob Costas was on our MLB Network Showcase game, Jason, on Monday. And he said, you can't shift, but you can shade. What have you seen so far with the notion? <laughs> okay. Well, this, the, the shift regulations have been really interesting. And th there was a funny one the other night. Corey Seager, what, did, what have we been telling him? The shift is dead. You're in great shape. Nobody was going to be helped by the shift ban more than Corey Seager. Except, wait a second, what's this? The right fielder is playing right behind the second baseman. So that's a 9-3 put out with the two-man outfield. This is the first time this has worked, going back to spring training. But of course, Corey Seager. We're getting used to it. We're getting yeah. used to it. Jason, but I think I feel like we're doing a pretty good job. Us, <laughs> like we're playing. Too. Yeah, we're we're adjusting fine. That's right. <laughs> Not all the points. Robert, right. how are you adjusting? How are you living over there? What's that? You see what this is? That's exactly. This is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs>